This is how I set distance learning and how to keep the connection with students studying at home. In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that I've learned about how to maximize the effectiveness of student study time when they're at home. And this video is about students being at home and I've got a follow-up video about how you can teach from home, how you can teach remotely as well. I hope these are really useful to you at the start of this new year. There are two things that you need to get right. You need to make and keep those connections and you need to assess accurately and in minute detail. Luckily, both things can be achieved through the same strategies. And I'd love to hear how you have been setting distance learning in the comments below, how it's been going for you, and if you've got any tips and tricks that you can share. Thanks to Tassamai for sponsoring this video. Tassamai is a quizzing app that we choose to use because it's based on the best evidence of how students learn. Stay tuned to the end where I'll tell you how Tassamai makes sure your students are revising in the most effective way, even when they're at home. So during the first lockdown, my practice developed really fast. I quite quickly realized that just pinging out YouTube videos wasn't really leading to much meaningful and joined up learning for the students. So I wanted to make a more personal interaction with the students. And I think there's two ways to do that. You can either appear live and teach live during those lesson slots during the week, or you can deliver meaningful feedback to quiz questions that you've actually devised. Towards the end of the first lockdown, I was delivering at least one live session for my students where I was delivering bespoke whole class feedback to quiz responses that they'd given me. So I was doing a bit of a mix of both. So after having refining what I was doing throughout that period, and now into this new period where we've got some kids learning at school, some kids learning at home, I've refined it into this three part lesson structure. One, get the Tassamai daily goals. That's the quizzing app that we use, but you can just see that as being some retrieval practice that you set them at the start of each lesson and that they can get started with that without you necessarily being there at the very start of the lesson. That just sorts out your spaced interleave retrieval practice and you know that the kids are learning in the best way possible. They're engaged in learning in the most effective way and it's adapting to their strengths and weaknesses as it goes. So part two is delivering new knowledge. And I got to the point where I realized that I was trying to make videos that were just really similar to my normal lessons in school. I think it's better to think about the lower order learning skills, the, the knowledge and understanding and just make videos that are short and to the point and cover those key points. This is where I would turn up live and actually talk through things. And it's a blessing now that the kids can talk back to you over Teams or Zoom or Google Classroom, whatever you're using. And you can actually get a little bit of that question and answer going at that point. Check out my video on blended learning, which talks about the best things to set remotely and the best things to keep covering in class. Then the third part of my lesson would always be a written response quiz. These questions can probe the harder skills, the apply and analyze and even evaluate skills. This is where they're actually gonna try and use what you've taught them in your short video or your short live presentation. So I use MS Forms for that, but you could use Google Forms or any way really to gather longer written responses from the students. And then I think once you've got that, then that feeds back into the start of the next lesson. And what I found really, really useful was the kids actually spending the time to complete those quizzes and then me spending the time to prepare a whole class feedback where I go through exactly what I thought the kids were understanding and weren't understanding. And from that, you can develop the higher order skills. The nice thing about having Tassimai in the bag, of course, is that once you've completed a task, you can just tell them to go directly back to that learning platform and know they're engaged in some really useful study. So it's so important to continue to find ways to connect with your class, even when they're at home. So it was really in the live sessions that I was able to teach in that responsive and adaptive way that we all know and love. But having got that written work from them and be able to deliver that whole class feedback made that a really interactive experience. I do think there's some technology that's really important. This visualizer has been really invaluable for teaching from home or for teaching remotely. And the pen tablet display has been really useful as well because I can annotate over PowerPoint. And that can really help me respond to the questions the kids are asking live. More on that in the video aimed at how you can teach from home. But I think when the kids are at home, it's important just to continue bearing in mind that you've got to make those relationships and keep those relationships. And being there, being available is the way that you're going to do that. So I don't think you need to be live all the time. That's what we would call a synchronous lesson. But I also don't think it's right for the students for us to just do lessons where they turn up and they're expected to work through at their own pace. That's an asynchronous lesson. So live lessons or synchronous lessons and asynchronous lessons can work in a nice blend, just like you might deliver if you were doing a blended learning model in school in normal times. But you do need to make sure you plan really high quality asynchronous lessons, ones where you're thinking very carefully about what the students need to know and how they can use that, and how they can demonstrate they've understood that or not. 
and then you need to deliver responsive and interactive and really quite kind synchronous lessons where you show that you are still that caring teacher that wants to be there for them and help. To achieve the highest grades, students need to be constantly revising their foundational learning out of lessons. And the best way to do that is through spaced, interleaved retrieval practice. These are the three most effective learning techniques according to the best evidence, and Tassimai is a tool that can make sure the students are doing just that. It runs interleaving for you, it spaces out the retrieval practice for you, and makes sure they're engaging in quality recall practice without you having to do anything more than just set them off on the right course. It leaves you the time to plan really focused lessons around the areas that they need to target the most. And it can identify those areas in minute detail. More on how you can use Tassimai to identify student priorities in a later video. So teachers, that's how I set distance learning. It's not perfect and I'm learning all the time. But I do think there's some elements of what we're doing now that's actually here to stay. Some elements that are actually really good. Don't forget to reflect on all the new skills that you've gained throughout this period. For example, using forms to gather feedback from students, talking live to a camera, or making videos. So I'm doing a bit of a project at the moment, evaluating models of hybrid learning, blended learning, and distance learning, and I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know your experiences of them, your evaluation of different techniques that you've tried. So please comment below. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos aimed at teachers on my channel. But right now you can get started with this playlist linked here with more advice on how to make more useful digital resources. Thanks for watching Good Physics.